I'm Tamara and my current role is, is lots of things. And I think that that's what really attracted me to CSU and what attracts me to startups because I see myself as a generalist who just likes learning and, and doing lots of new things. Um, so today I'm responsible for external communications that includes PR, like socials on my team, employee advocacy on my team, analyst relations, content, customer stories. You know, I work on SEO, I work on product marketing stuff. Um, I work with demand gen on events, on a webinar, you know, I think generally communications and content is kind of how I broadly define it. But the thing I really like about CSU is like, there's no kind of single person win or project. So I get to, to learn and collaborate with everyone on a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a nice mix. Um, how big is CSU uh, total employees? Uh, yeah, so we are around 100 employees. Okay. So it's a it's a fun stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's still very much startup stage, mm -hmm. <laughs> I imagine. Um, did you have any experience with employee advocacy? And I guess kind of to, uh, to the question I was going to ask, you know, mm -hmm. why, why invest in employee advocacy? You've obviously got a whole bunch of things you're responsible for a limited amount of time. Um, what made employee advocacy kind of rise to the level of being a priority? Yeah, I mean, I think employee advocacy, it's something I had built and worked on employee advocacy programs before. So I did it at Looker, uh, you know, where we started when we were really small and then continued building that program until we were acquired by Google. And then we had a similar tool at Google that we used. And so I've seen the impact that employee advocacy can make. And especially I feel when a company reaches a certain number of employees where it's hard for everyone to know everything that's happening all the time. You know, you can't just send a Slack message and say, by the way, we released this blog today or we're doing this webinar, help us promote it. You know, once you kind of reach that point where it's hard to communicate all the things that every team needs to communicate to people, um, it's important to bring on an advocacy tool. And also I think, because once you reach that point, it's the signal that you've got enough good people there that you've invested in and you've invested in hiring these experts for not only their expertise, but also their network and their connections, that it's kind of this perfect threshold where you should be investing in employee advocacy. So it was something that we started talking about right when I joined CSU is, okay, we wanna, we've got all these like really smart, really well-connected, wonderful employees here. How do we engage them in the content that we're creating in what we're trying to share in the broader market, but also make them feel connected to it? So it was something I was thinking about and talking a lot about right when I first joined and naively at the beginning, I thought a Slack channel might be, might be good enough for us to get started with. So we started a Slack channel where, you know, Rachel, who's on my team, who actually does all of our social and is the administrator on everyone's social and is, you know, in both all the social tools every single day would share content and then share um, copy for employees to try to make it as easy as possible. Um, but within the first quarter, we realized that that, you know, it was so it's so easy for things to get lost in Slack and there's so much communication. So we wanted a tool that was made for it. We wanted something that would make it easy and where people would intentionally go and, and look for content and look to share. Um, so that's really what let us know. It was it was time to invest in in someone and in something that could do it right. Yeah, it's funny. What was the name of your Slack channel? Uh, social media ask because we nice. have like you know we, we the, the naming conventions and stuff that we do so the ask at the end is like hey it's a place for you to come and ask questions um and now that channel is like hosts are everyone's social office hours and for questions mm -hmm. and things but it's not um it's no longer just kind of a, a content sharing channel yep yeah it it many years ago may, and you may have had experience with this at, at Looker before that, like I remember in the early days, to a degree before Slack was like a thing, um, mm -hmm. it was email, right? That's 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 how you know send a bunch of links with some copy paste, you know, share copy. Um, I just got off the phone with another uh, similar stage startup, about five hundred people, and uh, same exact issue. They have a Slack channel called share my LinkedIn post. And uh, <laughs> so that's what they're trying to figure out. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I've I'm tried email too. <laughs> yeah, 
which maybe in some respects is harder. I don't know, maybe more people yeah. look at email than Slack message, but um, I, I am particularly curious, uh, given your background at some other companies, what made you choose Everyone Social? Obviously, you've, you've had some experience with some other tools. Yeah. Um, so I hadn't, I hadn't really, I hadn't heard of Everyone Social um, when I was starting to evaluate tools at CSU, and I had worked at other platforms at you know with Looker and Google and other places. I had looked at other tools, and when I was starting to evaluate, um, actually, you came recommended by our CMO. So Sun Lee had heard of you, and so when I was starting to look at tools, she was like, "Oh, look at them! I think I've worked with them before. You know, they seem really good." And immediately, you know, there were key criteria that I was looking for. And so it was really easy to find that on just on your website and find those check those initial boxes. So I knew I wanted something where we could have an internal way to post and give employees context about mm -hmm. what it was that we're, that we're sharing and saying, hey, by the way, you know, this is a podcast or this is an article between these people. Um, so we wanted the opportunity to have that note. We wanted the opportunity to provide like share copy for, for LinkedIn and Twitter to make it as easy as possible. Um, I had seen leaderboards really work before. And so that was really important to me. Um, you know, and it, from a feature perspective, it checked a lot of the boxes, but then also, you know, from a pricing value perspective, I was evaluating several tools and I felt that what we got with everyone social was just so much deeper and so much more in line with what we knew that we needed. Um, but then one thing actually that really surprised me in working with your team is I had never worked with the team before where they were actually involved in the onboarding and helping us roll out in the implementation. And JP, who we worked with, just went above and beyond and totally surprised any expectation that I had before. You know, the emails, the training decks, the stats on, you know, why employee, employee advocacy is important really helped to not only train me on the tool and train Rachel on the tool as the two admins, but it also helped us to, to train and get that like build in and engagement across the company. Um, so products value, uh, you know, support and customer experience have all been, have all been great. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Um, yeah, it's funny, you know, one of the things you called out there, the, this is more of a, a sidebar, but, um, the internal note, you know, on the post to kind of give some context to the team. It was funny when we first started including that probably three years ago, um, a lot of people didn't like it, you know, cause they felt like it created confusion or, mm -hmm. you know, was this internal, was it external? And, and well, anyways, I'm, I'm glad to hear that was something that was important to you. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone has, so much noise and so much information going going at them that it's hard just like it's a really simple way to context set set and it helps <laughs> like i wish yeah, more things agreed. came with that fyi this is what this means and this is why it matters or you know it's helpful yes yeah it's uh we, there have been a handful of folks on our team who i think uh We've talked about like Axios, you know, the, the mm -hmm. news service, their whole yeah. model is like news as bullet points. And yeah, yeah, so often it's like, you know, just giving someone some explicit context or instruction is, you know, the, it makes their life easier, right? This is something, it's this, the TLDR, we'd like you to do this with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it, and then I think in particular, one of the things that we've always we know this from, I mean, this is at the heart of advocacy, right? It's, it's just the idea that people have a higher degree of trust and connection with other people as opposed to brands. That mm. applies internally as well, right? I mean, if they see you or an executive or a member of your team, who's the one who's taken the time to, you know, ensure that piece of content is in everyone's social for, for others to engage with, it just, it creates that much more of a, a, a driver, you know, for, for people to take action. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I love news and read a ton of articles like all the time. And I'm always kind of saving things and okay, like come back to this. Um, and it's really nice to have that summary of, of what it's going to be about to make that decision on, should I invest in this? Should I invest in this? Because I want to go read the full thing later and I want more details on this. Or if I'm an employee looking at a tool, should I invest in this? Is this relevant to me and to my audience? Because I also think that, you know, 
whether it's LinkedIn or, or Twitter or whatever network you're talking about, it's important to acknowledge that we're all, you know, building something and we're all building something that yes, you know, we're advocates for our company and for our brand, but we're also building our own networks and our own reputations. And I think that people really care about what they share and, and how they share. And so giving someone an FYI, like, hey, you know, this is on these product features or, oh, this is on the state of the market, I think helps people more confidently make that decision and, and something that feels just more authentically them. Definitely. So you said at the outset, you know, you're owning everything from comms to social to SEO. How, where do you see advocacy kind of ranking on that stack of, you know, investment and priorities or just how, how do you, how do you see it amongst that mix? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think for me, I see it as really high, you know, I broke into marketing and I broke into communication starting running as, as a social media manager. So I'm already coming in as a fan, but I think something that's really important about it is, you know, as a marketing team and as a content person and someone who enjoys writing and, and enjoys building content, we think so much about what we're saying, but I think something that is becoming increasingly just difficult across marketing is delivery. Um, there's so much noise. There's so many, you know, virtual events and, and so many different things that it's really hard to stand out. And it's really hard that even though you've got something that's valuable and you know who it is you can help and you know that you can help them, it's really hard to get that message to them. And so I think delivery has become increasingly hard. And I think that advocacy is a great way to help you just exponentially expand your delivery, most likely to the right people, because you spend a lot of time investing in who you're hiring and their networks and their expertise and good people know good people. And so I think that with an advocacy program, you know, for such like a small investment, you can help really expand the delivery of your content or, you know, your message or whatever it is you're trying to share to a credible and much larger, larger audience than you would be able to, if you were just paying for, you know, advertising or, or testing in all these spaces. I think actually last night in preparation to talk with you, I was looking on our everyone's social dashboard to see like, okay, what have we achieved since onboarding with everyone's social, looking at, you know, the cost of the impressions and the clicks and the followers and the reach that we've gotten, you know, just in our, in our first, you know, couple quarters on with the team compared to what we paid for everyone's social um, and looking at like what that advertising cost would have been, you know, for, for if we were to test for that same amount of reach, um, I think it was like a 325x. <laughs> like, I mean, just just laughable. So I think to back to your question on where it should be in terms of investment, I think it's a small investment that really helps amplify a marketing team's reach and a marketing team's time because we were trying to do this manually on our own before bringing on everyone social, and we were spending a lot of time on it and still just weren't seeing the engagement that we wanted to see. Yeah, I, I, there's two things there that um, I think are, are really great points. Sometimes it, it almost doesn't matter what it, what, what it is, you know, it, it could be advocacy or any other initiative. I mean, this is really, of course, like the promise of technology, right? It's like when you do something manually, it's not necessarily indicative of what, would happen if you're able to scale it and automate it, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I suspect that is probably part of the reason why some organizations out there um, perhaps feel some level of trepidation towards stepping into advocacy is that, you know, well, we've been sending these emails, you know, forever and people aren't doing things with them or we don't think they're doing things with them. Um, it's hard, it's hard to draw a conclusion from that activity to what it could be, right, with mm -hmm. like the proper tool. Um, the other thing that you brought up just around, uh, you know, cost versus value. I mean, our goal, there's, it's, I always feel like this is a little bit of a sidebar. Mm -hmm. I mean, for you, it makes sense because you yeah. own like so much of the marketing pie, but, you know, especially in larger organizations, the folks we work with don't necessarily have any any visibility into like, you know, 
content or SEO or, mm. or paid. And, um, but so much of, I think the value of advocacy is, is rooted in uh, kind of the comparable being paid, right? Because mm-hmm. in essence, we're producing yeah. the same outcomes, right? It's like an employee shares a piece of content and it, it uh, generates a certain number of impressions and clicks and engagements. And of course, that's what you would pay for, you know, to run an ad on one of the social networks. But um, our, our goal is, you know, to do a minimum of five to 10 X kind of ROI multiple. Mm-hmm. And, and hopefully more of our customers are kind of doing the math that you're doing, which is like, well, we spent this, but we got this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's always our hope. Um, kind of riffing off that, are there any other macro marketing challenges that you feel like Sisu is facing, you know, as a, within your market or just simply in B2B marketing in general, I think, you know, you, you've called it out. Like it's really hard to get people's attention right now. Um, things are getting more expensive, but any other things as you kind of look forward that are, um, you know, pressing challenges for, uh, for you and your team? Yeah. I mean, I think kind of to, to double back on those points, like two things that I think about a lot are, you know, awareness. We are, we are startup. Um, and so just getting our name out there, um, you know, and, and getting people to understand and to recognize what it is that we do and how it is that we can help them is, it's huge. And we've got so much work to do. Like, you know, I mean, as a startup, that isn't, that is an uphill battle. Um, so building that awareness is really important, but then also just cutting through that noise. Um, and I think, you know, more and more, especially I look at our everyone social stats. I look at our LinkedIn stats. I look at blog. I mean, you know, our marketing team, we're all looking at everything. We are a small and mighty and connected team. So we're all, you know, looking and testing different things and seeing what's working, what's not working. And then how can we work together as a team to find out what's working and something that we consistently see in content, in events and in social is, you know, increasingly people are responding more and more to other people. You know, I think especially the last few years kind of there's been a little bit of a disconnect and, and people have you know been working more from home. I am now a fully, you know, work from home employee. And so that human connection, I think is really important. Um, and so something like, it's something that we're seeing across different channels, but it's really hard to replicate and it's really hard to scale. And that's why it works um, because people connect with other people. And so I think that that's something that again, I think is a value of advocacy, but it's still something that we're trying to figure out how, how to scale and how to really like double down on that in a way that is authentic to each employee um, and really works for them because I do see, you know, people will respond or engage or, or like, or download or click or register for something, you know, when it's coming from someone that they trust. Um, And so like just, trying to find a way to, to really scale up and, and build that human connection. I think that is a challenge and it's something that we know we need to double down on, but the reason that it works is because it's not automated. You know, it's not just a machine doing it. It's someone choosing something that they care about and hopefully writing, you know, their own copy and saying, this is why it's important to me. This is why I think it matters to my network. Um, I think people really respond to that. Yeah. yeah I mean, we're a believer for sure. Uh, and. Uh, you know, the other thing is that it's, I don't know that this is obvious to every, to, to kind of, even those who've invested in advocacy, but, you know, the reality is the social platforms reward uh, things shared by users more than they do uh, things posted by brands um, mm-hmm. or, or advertiser, just purely algorithmically, yeah. right? It's uh, um, users are the most Im- important kind of component of any one of these social networks. And, you know, that's, that's a bit of the kind of ace up the sleeve, so to speak, I think when it comes to advocacy, you're also talking about other things, which are, you know, critically important. It's one thing to, you know, activate a group of people, but, you know, figuring out how to kind of keep them active in an authentic manner. And, you know, based on the content you're giving them, the share copy, uh, encouraging them to, you know, personalize it. All of those things, of course, are, you know, more, more layers uh, out from the start. But um, 
speaking of which, what, what are your goals, um, you know, looking forward maybe over now that you've, I think you've, you've gotten through implementation, mm -hmm. um, um, over the next year, like what, what are you, what are you hoping to achieve? Yeah. I mean, I think our big thing, I think about it from two perspectives, you know, one, one is just awareness. Awareness is, you know, very important to owning comms and, and different things, just expanding that reach and, you know, bringing more people into knowing about Sisu and hopefully into the appropriate funnel, whether that's a sales funnel or, you know, a customer success or engagement funnel, you know, where our customers are engaging and, and clicking and sharing our content and finding value from it, or even a recruiting funnel, you know, at this point, or really at any point, building and expanding the team that we have with the right people is so important. And mm -hmm. so awareness, especially for, for a tool and for a program like this is really important to me and always just continuing to expand that awareness. But then also I think employee engagement um, and employee visibility into what is going on. Uh, I definitely, it's really important to me to make sure that marketing doesn't feel like a black box to employees and something that is really important, you know, across our team and saying, hey, you know, this is what we're working on and this is how you can see your work showcased in this. And you know, giving everyone that visibility. But I think especially as companies grow, that can become really challenging. Um, and people can feel deaf, you know, like disconnected from, oh, what's going on in marketing? And, you know, they're, they're just doing a launch here. And so I like that employee advocacy programs and this type of sharing allows you to show different teams, whether it's engineering or product or recruiting or customer success or sales, like, you know, in a good company, marketing should be celebrating the work of all these people. And, you know, and highlighting what it is that they've built or done to help other people. And so I think continuing to really build that engagement and awareness of what's going on, you know, what are top things that we're sharing publicly in, in that public arm of the company um, and really highlighting how what we're talking about in marketing relates to and is really celebrating what all the other teams at CC were doing. Yeah. It as you may know, we work with companies like Sisu. We as a company look mm -hmm. like Sisu from a, from a size and scale standpoint. And then we have clients that are just insanely huge, you know, and, and the, the big ones are fun because, you know, you get to kind of work on things at scale and see how that works. And I know mm -hmm. some of the past companies you've been involved with kind of operated at that level, but what you just described is the reason why we just love working with companies of your stage mm -hmm. and size because it, it's almost this kind of it, what what are kind of ideals and aspirations at the enterprise level mm -hmm. are, can be reality at the hundred yeah. person level. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know, everyone can be aware and everyone can be involved. And um, you know, uh, credit to you for for really pushing that because it's so much harder to achieve uh, at, at any larger size. Oh, I mean, it's, it's so hard and building that connection. And also I think, you know, celebrating people. I never want people to think that that marketing or the blog or, you know, podcasts or anything are just for, at least, you know, from my perspective and the way that we see it at CSU is it's not just for executives and it's not just for certain people, you know, it's a highlighting the perspective of, you know, an engineer or someone on product mm -hmm. or someone on customer success. I mean, your, your customers are, are so important to everything that you do. Um, and so really highlighting all the pillars of the company and what everyone's contributing is, is really important and it only gets harder. So yeah. Good, yeah. good to focus on it as early as possible. <laughs> yes. Um, so executives, you said your uh, CMO was familiar with us. So mm -hmm. uh, apparently they're a supporter of, yeah. of advocacy. Um, how sometimes, you know, executives can be a challenge when it comes to supporting an advocacy program. Mm -hmm. I, you know, would love to hear if you have any experience with that. And, and also just in uh, with your current CMO, um, how, how do you see this connecting with kind of their top line priorities or mm -hmm did they have any concerns that you had to kind of work through as, as you, you know, push to, uh, to make this investment? Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll start with the second question first, cause it's really easy. Um, I mean, son, our CMO, she obviously was the one who recommended everyone social specifically. Um, but she is an amazing marketer and his son is at wonderful brands. And so 
you know, getting, she, she knew from the get-go that it was going to be something important and something that would really help our team, you know, expand our reach and really help, you know, build brand awareness, which is so important at this stage. Um, so she was an early advocate. Um, we also had, you know, several other leaders who had been at companies before and had seen tools like this. And when I started, I was asked by multiple people like, okay, you're going to help us do this now, right? You know, so especially executives who would come from companies that had already gone through that scaling phase. Mm. They had had such positive experience in the past that I was, I was thrilled. It wasn't really a buy-in conversation. It was like, okay, yes, tell me when it's ready. I want to sign in. I want to be one of your early users. And so we had, you know, several leaders who were at our initial kickoff call and we're just like, yep, sign me up and, you know, helping push that to their team. So you know, the, the buy-in and the engagement and the executive support at CSU has really been amazing. Um, but I do think it's important to acknowledge that social media is hard and social media is scary. And, you know, when talking to executives or, you know, just even folks who, who aren't marketers or potentially even marketers, it's important to acknowledge that it's not easy and that it's not something that everyone is comfortable with and that there's no one size fits all solution. Um, I post because I have to, because it's a part of my role and, you know, kind of a part of this marketing career that I've been on, but it's not something, uh, that I feel completely comfortable with doing. You know, it always, it, it worries you a little bit because you're putting something of your, you know, yourself totally. out there and you're like, oh gosh, what are people going to think? And I think, you know, that it's really important to acknowledge that when you're talking to an executive or anyone who's worried about it and to say like, Hey. I just want to acknowledge it, it doesn't necessarily come easy and it's not always super comfortable because you are sharing something very broadly, hoping that people will care and, and hoping that people will engage. Um, but then for, you know, executives or for anyone, I would say it's not a one size fits all solution. It's about what, you know, feels really important and what feels relevant to you because that's what your audience is going to care about. You know, you've built up a network and you've earned this position because of your credibility and because of your expertise and people want to hear from you um, and people want to hear about that. And so that's where I think some of the product features like the, you know, the notes on everyone's social saying, Hey, this is what it's about really helps to potentially comfort fears of people who may be worried about sharing because it gives them a better idea of picking something that feels right for them. Um, and then just, I mean, I think encouragement and reminding and saying, you know, hey, you know, we can we can work on this. And, you know, I like to provide people with options for shared copy, but then work with them to tailor and say like, okay, how would you like to say this? And then to kind of get to know, you know, the feel for what feels comfortable and authentic and, and relevant to them. And I think it's a learning curve, but I think it's just really important to get back to your main point is to acknowledge that it's not something that's necessarily comfortable or easy for anyone and to just set the stage there and then work with people to find a way to individualize and personalize it to them as much as possible. And then especially yeah. for executives to say, you know, you're credible, you're, you're, you know, one of the biggest people that we have here. So your experience and your opinion on things are what people really want to hear from. Um, and then finally, I think for closing with executives, it's if you're not going to talk about the company and you're not going to talk about the problems that we solve, like how can we expect others to, you know, we really need to lead by example. Yeah, no, I, I, I yes, I think <laughs> you are spot on that. Any other tips no matter though? Who, what have you <laughs> Well, I think no matter who you are, I suspect even Elon yeah. Musk is nervous about posting, you know, from, I don't know, he might have some, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he may not be, <laughs> but I look, I still feel nervous about doing it, you know, and, and I, I don't even consider myself, you know, advanced. I think, you know, I'm uh, personally speaking, uh, you know, I still feel relatively novice, even though this is really our core business. But mm -hmm. I think to your point, you know, giving, steps um you know like frankly that's why we have you know internal only posts and everyone social so mm -hmm. that you know you can post to your team and i i probably do that nowadays i don't do that as much as i post on an external basis for but for a decent period of time like i posted more to our own team um yes. 
you know, it feels a little bit safer. It's just, you know, it's our group. It's not, you know, it's not external, but, but I think, you know, the, that there is speaking of Elon as a, as a strange, you know, example, yeah. um, for no other reason other than the, the amount of uh, marketing and enterprise value that he as an example has created for his companies. I mean, you consider Tesla has never, to my knowledge, spent any money on, you know, ad campaigns, uh, be they, uh, you know, digital or print or anything like that. And um, it's, yeah, if there's so much to be gained and, and I think every executive mm -hmm. fundamentally understands that as their responsibility, right? Like they, they are a leader on an internal basis, but especially mm -hmm. if you're at that upper echelon, it's, it is their responsibility to build enterprise value. You know, yeah. if, if you're, if you're a private company, if you're a public company, it's all about growing the value of that entity and being out there, being seen. I remember a number of months ago, I was having a conversation with a, another client of ours, the CMO of this company, uh, Workfront, that was acquired by Adobe. Mm -hmm. And he was the CMO of Workfront uh, for a few years when uh, when they were clients of Everyone Social. And I was, it's the exact same thing you're saying, you know, awareness. And, and I was kind of talking to him about our marketing plans and some of the challenges that uh, that we were having. And, and you know, he, he reiterated the point to me personally, which was, well, you know, look, you can do your marketing stuff and, and, you know, certainly getting your team activated needs to be a part of that. But, you know, you as an executive, you need to be out there as standard bearer, you know, sharing mm -hmm. the vision for what, you know, why do we exist? Not just like, Hey, this is our product and, you know, come here and sign up for a demo, but like, you know, hopefully with all of our businesses, there's some more kind of fundamental reason why we're all spending our time doing this, you know? Yeah. And so anyways, um, what, uh, maybe just to wrap things up, like, mm -hmm. um, what do you think, and I feel like you've already said a bunch of these things, but marketing right now, I think yeah. there's a lot of people that are pretty stressed out about marketing. I, I feel like you've got to, <laughs> You you have a really good view on. I mean, I I definitely share a lot of your perspective around kind of just the nature of marketing and involving mm -hmm. everyone, and it's it's um, uh, you know so forth. But there definitely seem to be some changes, you know, happening out there. Mm -hmm. Data privacy laws. Um, obviously, the pandemic was was hugely impactful for those that heavily relied on you know in person events. Mm -hmm. advertising is just expensive and getting more expensive and I would argue less effective. Um, what, what do you think is going to separate kind of marketing winning uh, winners and, and, and losers over the next, you know, few years? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely getting harder <laughs> and it's definitely changing. I think, you know, at the, at the beginning of the pandemic, we saw everyone was going to, to virtual events and then, a we've seen a little bit kind of, of people going back to in person and now this hybrid and it's constantly changing and people are both I feel like feeling burnt out on some things but then also eager to engage and meet with people in other ways so it's really hard um I think two things really stand out in my mind as far as the best way to help marketers navigate whatever it is that's coming next um one definitely is is data <laughs> you know I've at, at CSU, you know, we're a decision intelligence engine um, and we're, you know, essentially in the, in the data analytics stack, um, but also just something as myself as a marketer, looking through the numbers and understanding, okay, what content performs well, where are people finding it, where are people engaging, you know, where, how are people moving through the funnel? And so I think while it takes time to, you know, go and, you know, look through different tools or, you know, working with an analyst or whatever the setup at your company is, I think that actually looking at data and looking at the numbers um, and getting smarter from activities and investments that you've already made to help you prioritize and focus and focus on making the right investments, um, you know, and actions in the future are so important. And I think data is one of the best ways to get there. Um, but then also the second thing that I think is really important to a marketer is your customers. Um, I think 
the best companies and the best marketing marketers in the world know that it's all about your customers. And that means getting to know them, working with them, helping them and listening to them early on. Um, you know, and it's not just from a customer story perspective, you know, because that validation and, you know, those customer quotes and a real life person, you know, using your product or using your good is so important, but also really building those relationships with your customers and understanding, okay, what were your challenges that led you here? What were you looking for? Understanding how they think and how you can make that person's life better and how you can help and find more people like that person is so valuable. Um, and that's something that, you know, I think one of the best opportunities I had as a marketer was to become even closer to customers and getting to actually work with and interview and listen to customers and build relationships with them. And I think that there's so much, so much value in learning from them. And there's, you know, whatever is coming in the, in the market and changing conditions, there's always going to be value if you can really listen to and help other people. And I think that the best marketing and the best companies are going to be built on like truly investing and caring in customer success. And then more broadly, like celebrating that story through their marketing. Yeah, I could not agree more with both of those things. And I, I would, you, you may or may not agree with this, but we had this conversation internally uh, with our team earlier today, you know, as we're thinking about kind of our Q4 priorities is, I think so often in marketing, there's this tendency to kind of look out, you know, and like, well, if we just simply did more, right? If if we yeah. if we created this new type of content, or we, you know, ran more ads, or we were in these communities, or spent more time trying to identify, you know, more of these things, mm -hmm. when a lot of that a lot of that stuff happens, and and yet we're not actually devoting the time to look inwards at mm -hmm. you know our own data and the conversations or opportunities to have conversations with the people who've actually bought the product and who are using it and who may like certain things and not other, you know, it just, mm -hmm. it, it, that is, that is the kind of the, the set of waypoints of like, how, where do we move from here? Right. How do we improve? Yeah. I, that's it. I mean, you know, there's, if you're looking, if you're trying to figure out how to navigate, there's probably really good signals in your data on, on what's working and what's not working and where you should focus next. And it's going to get, amazing signals, but also support, you know, from your customers. Like you said, the people who have already bought you understanding, why did you buy us? What are the problems you were trying to solve with buying us? And did we solve those problems? Um, but also to your point, I think last week a friend was chatting um, and they're, they're starting to build out a program at another company. And I was, you know, they were asking about employee advocacy, advocacy tools. Mm -hmm. And while I've used multiple tools, I think it was really the team and the implementation and, you know, support and the human relationships that we've received from, you know, everyone we've worked with, everyone social that made me go, but, you know, this is the first group that I would talk to. Because um, it's, it's about investing in and helping people, like, no matter what your product is, and no matter what your service is, like, we're all here trying to help other people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> On behalf of our whole team. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Demra, thank you so much for taking time to chat. This was great. Um, I'd love to circle back, you know, in a, in a few quarters, once mm -hmm. you've got some more kind of miles uh, down the road with your program, but it sounds like you're yeah. off to a great start. And, and uh, yeah, we're just super excited to be working with you and your team. Sounds like you've got a really clear picture of where you want to take this. Oh, well, no, thank you so much. I mean, your team, the product, JP, Shaylin, everyone that we've worked with has been amazing. So thank you for all the help and thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Social at Scale podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please be sure to subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, please let me know. You can access past episodes on our site at everyonesocial.com slash podcast. As always, please feel free to connect with me directly on Twitter or LinkedIn and look forward to seeing you next time.